This is Alan Gray at Newsblaze with an exclusive interview with Dr. Richard Bartlett from Midland, Texas. His protocol for treating COVID patients early is now being used in ICUs and doctor's offices around the world. Alan, thank you to you and your wife for what you've done. Thank you. What's the main thing you say about treating COVID differently? Early treatment is saving lives. But we're not doing early treatment. From the top, we've been told, be afraid. Be afraid of your neighbor. Shelter in place. Hide. It's interfered with people going to their loved ones' funerals. Weddings have been canceled in the name of COVID-19 and the fear of COVID-19. People have been shamed into acting in abnormal ways with their neighbors and their family members. The reality is that we have an answer. There is a place for evidence-based medicine looking at outcomes. If you'll watch an interview that I just did with Dr. Ralph Abraham, a U.S. congressman that's also a physician in Louisiana, you'll see that he's had 100% survival with hundreds of patients with COVID. It is possible. So what should people think now? If I get COVID-19, I might not need to be on a ventilator. I can survive this COVID pandemic without a vaccine. Maybe I don't have to suffer for three weeks and miss work for three weeks with Tylenol cupping it out at home. I could go to work sooner and recover quicker with an effective treatment strategy. For $3 at home, I could get relief and I could breathe. And that's the cost of a generic treatment with inhaled budesonide and inhaled steroid. That is definitely an effective strategy that's been proven over and over. But there are many tools in the toolbox to deal with COVID-19. We already have answers. The evidence is there. Why did you choose that one? There are several inhaled steroids that are possible and that are being used right now for prevention for asthma. This one, as opposed to the others, has evidence that it does not increase the risk of secondary bacterial pneumonia. There's an old term, double pneumonia, and it is based on the fact that usually if you get a viral pneumonia, a virus causing pneumonia, infection in the lung tissue, that you're set up for a secondary bacterial pneumonia. Double pneumonia implies both. So when you use inhaled budesonide as opposed to another commonly used inhaled steroid, budesonide does not have that same level of increased risk of secondary bacterial pneumonia. It's one that I'm familiar with. It's one that's being used by millions of patients with asthma preventively. They're healthy. In the United States, we have 25 million Americans that deal with asthma out of a population of 320 million. And millions are daily using inhaled budesonide safely preventively, prophylactically, so they will not have asthma attacks. It's something that's well known. I knew about it from the beginning when it came out 25 years ago, that it's safe with two-pound premature babies. It's safe for elderly fragile in nursing homes. Its efficacy is well documented. It's generic. It's cheap. Big Pharma will not make a dime off of this. It can be used at home safely, which avoids the hospital stay and the cost of a hospital visit. A big concern has been that the hospitals and the healthcare system will be overwhelmed with COVID patients. Well, good news, this is a treatment strategy that can be employed at home and keep most people from ever needing the hospital. This is a winning strategy from beginning to end. Just to add a, an exploration point, there's a report of a ICU south of San Antonio, Texas, that emptied their ICU in 48 hours when they started using inhaled budesonide on their COVID patients. The whole ICU was emptied in 48 hours. Everybody went home healthy. Up until they started employing that strategy, they had 50% of their patients that came to the ICU that eventually would require being intubated and transferred to San Antonio to a major center there. And since then, it's approaching 0% intubation. Their ICU is still empty. This is evidence that as long as someone's breathing, there is hope. We have provisions that are already in place that can answer this pandemic.